Uh, today's conversation is going to be about the latest in TCU advancements. Uh, this uh, product has been in the industry for many, many years, and uh, you'll see today that there are some new advancements in the uh, TCU market that you'll find interesting. What is a temperature controller, or TCU? Well, uh, the temperature controller is basically a temperature controlling device that has a, both a pump with the, will move a volume of tempered fluid through a tool or a process. It requires a process pump, electric heater, precision controller, and a cooling valve to control water flow. Now the term thermolator is actually a product that is uh, trademarked by Con Air back in the early 60s. The thermal, thermolator or TCU has been a workhorse in the injection molding industry you find them in various uh, locations, many times behind the uh, press uh, in an obscure area. You'll be also seeing them uh, used as a uh, stepping stool to uh, step on top of the molding machine. To, and so it's uh, used as, a, uh, as many uh, devices that it's really not intended for. Typical applications, as I mentioned, are as injection molding machines. It's also used in tempering for extrusion cooling tables, and it comes in various uh, configurations. Uh, typical is a direct inject, which is uh, the cooling water is supplied right to the tool through the pumping circum circuit. A closed circuit item, which basically has a heat exchanger that isolates the uh, cooling water from the process water. And then an isolated circuit, which actually has two separate fluids being used in the temperature controller. Uh, when designing or selecting a temperature controller, you should always look at the pump size, what its heater capacity is, uh, how much cooling capacity that the uh, pump tank can handle, as well as the control features. Generally, what we're really looking for is something that can provide a turbulent flow to provide good heat transfer through the tool. So when you are looking at the applications, please consider how much water needs to go through that tool, the volume of uh, delta T that you need to uh, have between the inlet temperature and the return temperature. The smallest temperature difference gives us the best heat transfer. And we don't want to pick a pump that we end up uh, overloading because we selected too big of a horsepower for the job. In heater controls, you should also consider whether you want to select a, a simple mechanical switch for a low cost solution, or look into more of a, a, a longer life option like mercury uh, switches, which are still common, but today are frowned upon because of the uh, environments that they're in. Or look at the more newer uh, design of a solid state relay, which uh, is mounted uh, inside, which is actually mechanic, not a mechanical switch, but electronic switch to provide uh, the uh, heat transfer uh, to the heater bands. And then selecting cooling valves, you should always look at uh, the right size cooling valve to maintain the temperature based on the load that you're trying to cool in the mold. Uh, this uh, can either be a simple solenoid valve or a, a little more uh, uh, advanced modulating control valve to give you uh, a much tighter tolerance, as well as dealing with uh, pressure differentials between your cooling water supply and the process water. So uh, what we have here today uh, is our newest uh, additions to our thermolator lines. The first one is our TWV, or value unit, here on my left. It's configured in a three-quarter or two-horsepower pump design with 12-kilowatt heating element. It has analog pressure gauges for to and from process. It has a very nice LCD di digital display control. It's a nice angle panel for easier readouts from when you're standing from a distance to look down at the, the unit. It's coming now in a much smaller footprint than the old current size. And he, you have the option for a mold purge for this feature. The TWS, which is this unit over here, um, does come in a small footprint when you're under five horsepower or under 24 kilowatts in capacity. It does come with the uh, analog gauges and in this case 
digital readout on the control panel is an option. Uh, you do have the capability of going with st solid state relay heater control. Uh, you have the option for a phase monitor to check the phase of the uh, voltage coming to the unit. Uh, you can get it with a full flow uh, filter, uh, sorry, filter as well as a full flow meter to uh, have the HMI read the flow coming to your process. The screen saver is customizable for the operator for viewing, so when it goes into a sleep mode, you can get just a simple display of uh, set point temperature. Uh, the TWP, or our premium version of our temperature controller, uh, is, has a lot more uh, designs uh, in the software for you to, um, to be more customizable for your applications. It comes standard with the solid state relay heater control. It does come standard with phase monitor. It has both the, uh, the, the gauges are gone and everything is digitally displayed right here on the four inch monitor. You have a control text help screen. So as you go through uh, a particular item and you're not sure what it is, you hit the information button and that will tell you then what that particular function is for and how to support uh, for uh, operation. It gives you three user level controls for input records. It has a customizable binary input for status and display. It comes with a variety of communication options like Modbus R RTU, TCP IP, or the new OPC UA interface. Uh, the main menu can provide you the reports for um, production uh, operation. Uh, it comes with an alarm list uh, to give you a listing of the historical alarms as well as current alarms. You have the user uh, page where you can now go through and select up to three user levels for uh, security purposes, so who can or cannot turn on certain uh, screen items. It gives you a full maintenance report uh, to give you an idea of what where items could be coming up for service. You get auto start and stop, uh, trend charts uh, for, for service capabilities, input and outputs for troubleshooting. And of course, all of them had the capability of doing mold purge. Uh, this uh, mold purge fe features using compressed air which allows you to evacuate the mold during the uh, mold changeover time. Uh, this uh, gives you a great ca capability of, of doing a quick changeover from one job to the next. Uh, in our overall TW designs or temperature controller designs, we have plenty of uh, flexibility to accommodate certain pump sizes. As we mentioned, we go down to three quarter up to uh, 10 horsepower on the larger frames here. We can go up to 48 kilowatts in uh, heating capacity for very large uh, load applications. As I mentioned, we also have the direct and closed circuited choices of using a heat exchanger or a direct cool. And of course, there's a variety of heat exchanger sizes based on the load applications you're looking at. Uh, one of the biggest things that are coming up that everyone is asking for is non-ferrous components. And yes, uh, they are available in bronze castings. So we can provide you a full non-ferrous product uh, with stainless steel pump, bronze uh, components, and uh, all non-ferrous components going out to the, to the uh, mold. Uh, this is great for uh, operations they're using in medical molding or in uh, other areas where they're using a, a little more uh, aggressive fluid that the uh, non-ferrous will prevent any kind of oxidation or rust. And of course, um, this all ties into the smart service package that Conair offers, which is our industry 4.0. And these components can be uh, in integrated with the smart service. So uh, this can be tied into all your plant-wide operations to review all the uh, typical uh, items that you look for in your process needs.